All right, welcome to Integral Physics. Today we're tackling the subject of sprockets and chains. And while we're at it, let's talk about belts and pulleys since they effectively operate on the same principles. Now at the onset, a sprocket and chain is not all that different from a simple gear train. But there's a few key differences between these which I wanna make sure you don't get tripped up on. So in a gear train, when the input gear rotates, the teeth of the input gear act on the teeth of the output gear. And because the teeth are meshed together, if the edge of the input gear moves forward, say, five teeth, then the edge of the output gear is going to advance the same five teeth forward. Really, we're saying the distance traveled by the edge of each of these gears is going to be the same. And whatever force is provided by the input gear is going to act on the gear teeth of the output gear. And a sprocket and chain is really no different. If this input sprocket rotates so that it pulls five links of chain onto the sprocket, then five links of chain must be pulled along this output sprocket. Now, because it's the role of this chain or belt to transfer force from the input sprocket to the output sprocket, if the input sprocket exerts a certain force on the chain, then that same force is gonna act on the edge of the output sprocket. See, just like with simple gears, sprocket and chains share what we call tangential quantities. That is the motion at the edge of the gear or the sprocket is the same at both the input and outputs. In the case of a gear set, it's the gear teeth meshing directly against each other that causes force, speed, and distance to be the same between the input and the output gears. In the case of a sprocket and the chain, it's the role of the chain to transfer the force, speed, and distance which the edge of one sprocket travels to the other sprocket. Now what varies in a gear or sprocket set is what we call rotational quantities. Those quantities being torque, angular speed, or angular velocity if you want to call it that, and rotations. And that's where gear ratios come in. A gear ratio is given by the equation n out over n in where n is the number of either gear teeth or sprocket teeth on either the input or output gear or sprocket. Now, in addition to sprockets and chains, we're also talking about pulleys and belts, which are smooth. They have no gear teeth, but their motion can still be related using gear ratio. And to do that, we simply need to relate their diameters to one another. So we have diameter of the output pulley over diameter of the input pulley. Now with a bit of derivation, we can relate angular velocity to gear ratio, and we can also relate torque to the gear ratio. So this equation not only applies to simple gears as they mesh together, but this also applies to pulleys and belts, as well as sprockets and chains. Now I mentioned there's a couple of key differences that set sprockets and chains apart from simple gear trains. And to understand those differences, let's take a look at a different sprocket and chain set. Here we have a timing belt layout for a typical automobile engine. Here's the crankshaft, which acts as the input, and here are the two different camshafts, which act as the output shafts within the system. And we can relate the rotation of each of these output shafts to the rotation of the input crank using gear ratio. But here's the big catch. When multiple output pulleys are involved, like we have here, we cannot apply our equation for torque using gear ratio. And that's because the force, or really the energy which is provided to the belt, is not always going to be distributed evenly to the two output shafts. See, in any gear system, whether that be simple gears or even sprockets and chains or belts and pulleys, so long as we're neglecting frictional losses, the power into the system has to equal the power out of the system. See, in these cases with a single output, that leaves us with this relationship we see here, relating torque to the overall gear ratio. But when we have multiple outputs, we have to back up a step to power. And we have to look at the total power in as being equal to the sum of all of the powers out at all of the different output shafts. Now, if we want to make this look a little bit more useful, we can expand out our expression for power. 
where power is equal to torque times angular velocity or angular speed. And that leaves us with this, relating the torque and angular velocity at the input to the torque and angular velocity at all of the output shafts. It's not a pretty equation, but that's all we get. Now the next issue which comes up has to do with the belt or the chain itself. See, when dealing with a belt and pulley, it's critical that tension is maintained in the entire belt or in the entire chain. See, belts have no teeth, so they rely on friction against a pulley in order to keep from slipping. And if there isn't enough tension, then the belt's gonna slip against that pulley. Or in the case of a sprocket and chain, if the chain goes slack, it might skip over the teeth of the sprocket. Now with belts and chains, tension is typically maintained in one of two ways, and you're probably already familiar with both. The first is simple. Think of a children's bicycle. The tension is maintained in the chain by sliding the back wheel rearward in the dropout until the chain is taut. And the other solution for maintaining tension is by including something we see here called an idler or a tensioner pulley. See, an idler is a pulley or sprocket that presses against the chain or belt to take up slack between the two sprockets that are a fixed distance apart. Think of a mountain bike. The front and rear sprockets are a fixed distance apart and the chain maintains a constant length. But as the bike shifts through the gears, the amount of slack in the chain varies and the idler sprockets take up that slack. Now the last thing I want to show you today is a little trick dealing with the direction of rotation within a sprocket and gear or belt and pulley system. So let's take this crankshaft and have it rotate clockwise. You'll see as this crankshaft rotates clockwise, it's going to pull this belt or this chain over the edge of this crank so that it's moving as we see it to the left along the crank. And so the trick when dealing with direction of rotation is that all of the components which are connected to the inside of the belt are always going to rotate in the same direction. In this case, we see them as rotating clockwise. And all of the components connected to the outside of the belt, in this case, the two idler pulleys, are gonna rotate in the opposite direction. So I hope you found this discussion of sprockets and pulleys helpful. Don't hesitate to comment below with any questions. And on that note, that's all for now.